yeah. Um, so my talk is about social architecture, and for us, social architecture means architecture that tries to make positive social change. And basically, it's about our book, also called Context and Intent. And it's basically about society and having a social purpose. So we don't really think of architects as the, you know, a Frank Lloyd Wright and master builder, or as an artist like Gaudi. I think we were more than Luca, like more of a thinker. And we think that architecture matters is because we are able to make our ideas real. Um, we're able to make concrete ideas. And one of our urban initiative projects is the Bookstop Project. And for this, we have books. Uh, that was our first idea. Like books are books equals knowledge, knowledge equals awareness, and awareness um, creates active citizenry. And so the question for us is, does anyone read books now? And if so, what's the role of a library? Like this is the um, Rose Reading Room. Um, it's just recently done. And, but you know, we were thinking like, the first libraries actually were outdoors before we had electricity, before we had electric lights. Um, libraries were just uh, repositories for books. And so we came up with the Bookstop project. Um, it's quite small, it's 12 square meters. Um, it's actually a series of like seven portals. And from the side, it looks like a shelf of, or a stack of books. So if you go around it, from different sides, it's actually, um, it's a rectangle, it's a square, um, it's a trapezoid, and it kind of changes. And so recently, it just won the um, Archivizer A Plus Awards. And I think it's been around, um, it's been to San Sebastian, it's been to Alabang. QC Circle, um, it's gotten quite a lot of um, awards and stuff. And why does it work? It works because we place it in the path of people. Um, we bring the library to the people. You don't make the people go to the library. And it works because um, it's not just a small shelf. You know, the number of books in it, it's about 800 to 1,000 books. Um, it's enough to be a library, a small library. And you know, we engage the people, we have events like every week or twice a week. So there's always something going on there and we have author's thoughts and stuff like that. And one of the things is that um, it's also barrier free. Um, it's accessible, there's nobody guarding it, everyone has access. So it's frictionless. And this is one of my favorite photos, it's like, um, people actually go there and just sit down and talk to each other. And you can actually see people or strangers teaching kids. And you see that, you know, you can read books together, um, you can explore, like everyone needs books. And you can read alone if you want. The point is like, you see how much people want books, how much they need books in their life. And so after a year, um, it's gonna turn a year in Sunday, on Sunday. The total square meters, we spent $16,000 on it. Um, we've covered five communities. Um, we've turned over 45,000 books. It's basically the biggest turned over for a library in the country. And we've had 80 events, and we've served over 200,000 visitors. So that's like about three pesos and 60 centavos per visit. And if you look at this, uh, we've done comparatives between the nearest library and if you look at 12 square meters compared to 450 square meters, it's 112 books in average versus 36 books, 205 versus 5, and 70 versus 23. So we're going to build uh, another one. It's an indoor version of it. Uh, this is going to be the second one. It's actually going to be put up tomorrow. It's going to be launched tomorrow in Ayala Triangle. And for this one, there's more of a seating area there. This was last night, and it's being built right now. And this is going to be an Ayala Triangle. And with the book stuff, we started thinking about, you know, um, an aspect of social architecture being kind of like in a network. And kind of thought, like, you have this, like, network effect in place where you can have a lot of them all throughout. But it's also a platform, you know, um, it's a platform where you can share ideas and where other things like community events and activities can be 
can use the library. And it's also a form of communication because you can have certain messages on these networks because they're so widespread. And so we're doing the Museo del Prado exhibit. Um, it's gonna be launched tomorrow also. Um, this one is about bringing the museum to the people. And, and the highlight is uh, Juan Luna's um, death of Cleopatra. So we're looking at the Museo del Prado in Madrid and it's all about the light, you know, having the light come in. And this is by Rafael Moneno. And even the, I think this is the extension which is going to be done by Foster. It's all about getting the sunlight in. And even the corridors, you see, it's all about the arches and the vaults, but there's like the sunlight in between. So I think it's a perfect space to be replicated outdoors. So it's sort of like what we came up with. And it's just a simple uh, taffeta canvas on like two arches, two steel arches. And it's going to be distributed in Ayala Triangle tomorrow. And there are like four um, clusters of it, um, each one with a representing sort of like a different layout that you can find in the Prado. And this is it being built last night, actually. And this is how it's going to be when it's up. It's actually going to be traveling also. It's going to be in Intramuros um, after Ayala Triangle. And imagine the museum in the park. And when you just want to go around there, you can rest, you see it, um, art in the park. So this is tomorrow. And another aspect of architecture that we're exploring is about shopping. How can we make this very um, consumerist, very capitalist activity uh, more social or more human? And we started thinking about that when we were doing this project. Um, it's actually an office building. It's called the Urban Block. But the first four floors were actually um, retail space. It was intended to be retail space. But what we did here was we started to blur the lines of what retail and commercial is. Uh, we said there shouldn't be much distinction because if you look at the Roman Forum, you have office there, you have retail there, um, you have politics there. So we didn't want to create this um, stark delineation between different activities. And I think that's how we started working with this and where the idea came from. And so now we're working on this project. Um, it's for a public market. Um, it's going to be in the city of Katmalogan. And for us, the idea here was that if you look at the shopping center, it's actually an evolution of a market. The only difference is that we got so focused on retail that we forgot the charm or the heart of a market. But now the shopping centers themselves, they're trying to become destinations because retail is moving online. And if we can get you know, the character or the charm of a market, which is like when we travel, we always go to the market, if we can retain this, then we can create a very interesting um, shopping experience. And so we said, you know, the typical way would be to segregate the market and the mall, and we didn't want to do that. We wanted to intersperse the market with the mall but more so, we wanted to blur the lines and just merge it and say, we are actually just building a market. It's just a different kind of market. And for us, one of the challenges here is how do you get, as with any retail space, is how do you get the people um, moving up to different floors? Because we wanted to spread the market spaces on the second, third, and lower ground floor. And the way we did this was we imagined the different floors as different areas or different places. And how you connect different places is you put a bridge, you build a bridge. And if you look at the first bridges, um, pedestrian bridges, there actually are programs in them, like the the Puerto Vecchio, the Rialto. So there's this program or activity in the bridge, and the bridge is actually a very interesting space because everyone has to go there. Everyone has to cross the bridge. So by putting these activities there, by putting these shops on the bridge, then you make people wander up and go up the space. And so this is how the bridgeway goes up. And it actually goes throughout the mall. Another feature that we did was, how do you get the, change the perception of what a market is? So we designated um, various market specialty zones. And by using that, um, sort of like upgrade or try to introduce what the market space can be, and try to get the vendors to 
you know, uh, improve. So these are the different spaces in the building. And, and then by doing the elevator, these are different frames um, coming from the pier going towards the building. And you only have like about this 10 meter wide road as your frontage. So we said, you know, this is as much as we can do with the development. But looking at the urban planning of Katbalogan, the next phase of development is actually up in the hill. So people are actually going to be looking down on it from the hill. And so we said, why don't we, because the, because the city is relatively flat. So we said, let's make it more interesting. Let's create sort of like um, a more variable skyline. And that's how it is. So now it's, we're doing the relocation sites actually. And these are the scale models that we're building. It's like the sectional model. And another part of social architecture that we're doing is about sustainability. But we look at it as sustainable lifestyles. And one of the problems, this is where I live, uh, this is San Juan, is we're building so many townhouses right now, and it seems to be a viable way to live. The problem is, um, they're all walled off from each other. And if you look at this map, once you start seeing them sort of like eating up the whole area, then the streets become disconnected from each other. There's no services, no public transport. Um, you can't buy anything because you have to travel so far to get stuff. So we sort of like said, how do we address this? So we said, if you use the 260 square meters of a typical townhome and lay it out flat, you can actually come up with like a condo unit. And it's actually much nicer because you have um, greater access to light and ventilation and all that. And there's much more privacy, there's much more security. And so this is how it's gonna look like. And you know, there's this much more affinity with the sky, you're able to provide amenities, but most important of all, on the ground space, you're still able to create this sort of like commercial space that connects with the rest of the, of the city. So the urbanity is not terminated, it is connected to the rest. And this is how it is looking now. Should be done by November. So that gave birth to these two other developments. And this other one in, but this one is opposite. This one is actually in Ongpin, um, in Binondo. So instead of like doing a, like a more denser development, we did the less, less dense development. Um, these are two units per floor. And I think for a place like Binondo, where density is so incredible, uh, for you to be able to have like a 300 square meter unit is quite a luxury. And the next is about the vertical village. The idea is that this is your typical town. You have a spine and you have side streets and you have your landmarks. And the houses are built around the landmarks. So if you kind of flip it up and you said you identify the landmarks, like you have your park here, you have your school here, you have your library here, and that creates the character. Because you can say, I live near the park, I live near the school, I live near the library. And if you stack them together, then you're able to, so like you give, the, you give choice back to the people. You are able to choose where you live, and since it's like right next to your unit, uh, by the elevator lo lobby, um, it's part of your everyday commute. Like you pass through it every day. It's not 20 floors down or 30 floors down, but it's just there. So it becomes part of your daily life, and this is how it's gonna look. It's kind of like an ivory tower. And it's actually uh, an offshoot of this project. This was the same client. And the project is actually a uh, reaction to this building, the Grand Opera Hotel. Because I think, I mean, I wanted to say that Art Deco buildings can work. So this is what we did. And we're actually pretty happy with it, like even the details and all. Um, it's one of the lowest cost buildings in the area. So it's actually pretty cheap. And it's sold out. So. That's my presentation. Thank you.